as many of you know, I'm very passionate about this community and figuring out how we can build strong, inclusive, effective communities that build really cool things. One of the things I've learned over the time is that it's really complicated and it's a mixture of, 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 of people and process and technology and all this kind of stuff. A while ago, my best friend, um, this guy called Stuart Langridge, who lives in England, was visiting uh, my wife and I in California and he showed me a TED talk by this guy. It's called Rory Sutherland. He is the most English person on the internet you will ever see. Um, he basically works in advertising uh, and he talks about behavioral economics. Jim Whitehurst talked about this the other day. And this is essentially um, the, the science of how we study irrational people and how they behave. The problem with economists is that they believe that everything can be put into a spreadsheet. And that's not the way we tend to work as human beings. So behavioral economics is essentially how do people really work? How do they, how do they think and, and how do we study that? So I thought this was really interesting because it effectively provides a scaffolding, a science-backed scaffolding for how we can actually build communities instead of the kind of figure it out and try to figure out best practice that I've been doing for most of my career. So what's interesting here is that we've all got one of these varying sizes and different people. Um, and within our brain, we have two types of thinking. And the first type is called system one. This is basically immediate gut reaction to something. One plus one, two, immediate. System two thinking is essentially more thought out processes. So if you're gonna buy a car, what's gonna be the right balance of features and, and, and lifetime and all the rest of it. And what's interesting is that system two is kind of like the press office for system one. It's the, we, we often react just immediately to various things and in, in system one, and behavioral economics is figuring out how we naturally react to things and then using that as a means to make base decisions. So within behavioral economics, I believe there's basically three things you wanna do. The first thing is understand irrationality, and there's actually a lot of common things that we do when we're ir as, as irrational human beings. So what are the things that we tend to do? How do we, be how do we react to various stimulus? The second thing is behavioral economics is fundamentally about building a choice architecture. It's saying, I want to get from here to here. And you might want to give people a bunch of different options that all will get to essentially the same point. And then what we do is we build interfaces, tools, and processes that, in, that essentially build that choice architecture that helps irrational people to get into the right direction. The problem with this is with behavioral economics is that it's fascinating, but it's very difficult to figure out how to actually apply it to real things. So I discovered this guy. Dr. David Rock, he's a brain scientist, and he's done a bunch of experiments with animals, and he came up with something called the SCARF model, which are five really practical things that you can do to actually um, bring behavioral economics into communities. So I'm gonna quickly run through this. Um, he actually published a full report on this that's pretty heavy, but it's really interesting. First thing is status. This is all system one thinking. As human beings, we really care about status. We care about, um, about our position in the group. And any ambiguity in terms of status is unsettling for us. So helping people to really understand where they fit, we often see this with developers and committers and recognizing people who are actually part of a community as opposed to people who are just fans of a community. So clarify that relative importance. The second piece is certainty. Um, system one thinking gets freaked out by insecurity and things that aren't particularly predictable. This is why when there's big significant changes at work, uh, the company gets kind of weirded out by things. So we have to plan for certainty and actively make sure that people don't have that level, level of ambiguity. The third thing is autonomy. And this is about choice architecture. As human beings, we inherently like choice. Um, when, we do, when we feel like our choices are removed, so imagine you join a company and you don't really have a lot of input in the direction of the company, we find that frustrating. So we need to put choices in place and build that choice architecture, but also we can structure that, like I say, so you can get predictable outcomes out of that. So even if all three choices get you to the position you want that person to be in, make sure you provide them with choices. The other thing is relatedness, is that social groupings are really important, and this is all about scope. So there's a lot of people in this room, and we're kind of divided up into little different groups, some people with different projects or, or whatever else. And that relatedness is important for not only getting to know people, but also making people feel part of something that's, uh, that's bigger than them. And what was really interesting was the final one, fairness. Uh, Dr. Rock did some interesting experiments with monkeys that identified that not only do we want fairness for us, every one of us in this room wants to be treated fairly, but we also want fairness for other people as well. So when you see acts of unfairness, it, we find that frustrating. Um, so that's the SCARF model. I encourage you to go and check it out. Uh, thank you very much.